Hi, Les from Retired and Living the Dream. Today's video, I'm going to be talking about setting up a little business for your wife and the cost of doing such things. Now, she's away working today. She's, it's her third day on her second little business that she's tried, and that's with the motorbike and Sam Law. Now, I'm going to talk about the motorbike and Sam Law. In Thailand, it's such a, an ingenious device is that if you have a, a motorbike and sidecar, you can have a multiple businesses. And for those people that watched my channel before, you'd see that I've already done a, a video on my wife and she set up a, a clothes business at the market selling clothes at a market stall. And now she's gone on to something else. And we're gonna sort of discuss that today on the setup costs and what she hopes to make and things like that. So today, I'm going to clean the bike because if you have a look at this video here you'll see that it started to go uh, sort of faded black so I've got some uh, back to black so what this does this gives the the black plastic a coat of I think silicon or something like that and it helps it go back to, to black which is you know makes the bike look almost new again so it's not expensive to buy and um, as I say, I'll show you the results after I've finished. But it, it works. And as I say, it makes it look new because it shines the, the blackness up and it's good. So, okay, the, the business. I like to call it a business in a box, really, because basically that's what it is, isn't it? It's, a, it's the Sam Law and it, it is what it is. It's a motorbike and sidecar. And in Thailand, they're absolutely everywhere. And you will see how many businesses there are with regard to the motorbike and sidecar. They're, they're everywhere. And I think they're absolutely a wonderful invention and idea. And um, as I say, my wife, she used to do the clothes but then she seen a brother doing another business at a market where he lives, selling the snacks and that. So she said, I want to give that a go. And I said, yeah, no problem if you want to give it a go. Now, she's bought all the, the equipment and everything with her own money. So I've not had to give anything towards it. And the cost of it, I'll go a little bit later on, of uh, the, the cost of how much it costs to buy all the equipment and set up. And that's the thing with Thailand, to set a little business up, it's so, so cheap, it's, it's not expensive here in Thailand. Even the cost of, again, which I'll go into a little bit later on, the cost of um, actually running the business, it's, it's ridiculously cheap, it's unbelievably cheap. But um, some people may say, because if you've watched my channel, you know I give my wife a salary so she doesn't have to work. And I've got no problems with that. And she's decided that she would like to do this little business. And I'll give you my reasons for my turning around and saying, yeah, I don't mind if you want to do that business. Is because she lives with me 24-7. Seven days a week, 24-7. So all I can explain and it's only those people who probably live in a remote area with regard to uh, having a conversation with a, another foreigner is the fact that you miss conversations. And she's living with me 24 seven, so all we do is talk English. And she has no idea about English lifestyle, English, news or what's going on around the world because she's not interested in that she's just interested in her own little lifestyle thailand thailand is is what she's interested in and i can't talk about thailand because you know i don't speak thai so therefore it's a little bit more difficult so like me and an english person or an american or australian Sometimes you crave just being able to talk your language to somebody else and put the world to rights, if you like. Now, a Thai person is exactly the same, exactly the same. They want to talk their Thai experiences and Thai lifestyle, 
blah de blah de blah and by doing that it gives them their breathing space if you like so that's one of the reasons why I said to that I didn't mind my wife doing this she doesn't need the money she's got enough money with the with the income and it's just to just to keep her happy and that's what most of us have to do at the end of the day is, is keep your wife happy keep them engaged keep them occupied now my wife used to work in a in a shirt factory six days a week and when we got together obviously she didn't have to work in the shirt factory anymore so then she become retired and she said oh i love being retired i love not having to get up for work and I said, and one day you're going to be bored because of, you know, not working. No, 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 she said, I'll never be bored of this. And bearing in mind, she's only 36, 36 now. From once she left the school, she was always working, never stopped, like five or six days a week and never stopped working. So therefore, she's had a life of working all the time. And now to be suddenly retired, as we all, I think, would agree, it's like a holiday, it, you know, one long holiday. But yeah, some people can get bored. Some people, and as she said, she, she feels as if she needs to do more than what she's doing. Because just sitting around on the hammock all day and, and uh, lazing away, she feels guilty. And whenever we do go back to the wife's farm with a, a mother, She's up at five o'clock in the morning helping on the farm. And she enjoys doing that because she feels as if she's some worth. You know, she isn't just <coughs> she isn't just lazing around and doing nothing all the time. And uh, her mother has yak yacked her a few times about being lazy and not doing anything and just sort of you know, they didn't bring her up to to be lazy. And um Probably my thoughts on that. Her parents don't really understand, you know, the fact that I'm giving her money as a salary so she doesn't have to work, so we can go anywhere we want to go, as and when we want to. So, but again, that's Thai culture. It's, it's a Thai way of living, and it's a totally different mindset to, to how we live and how we think. Um, I'm retired, I retired at 50 and I love every minute of it. Look what I'm doing, look at where I'm sat here. Beautiful, beautiful location. For me, I've got a beautiful lifestyle and I love every single minute of it. And uh, I choose not to work because I've been there. I've worked seven days a week. And um, thankfully now I'm sort of in a bit of a, a better financial situation because I got a pension and I can live here on a pension. And um, it's not a big pension, but it's enough to live on. And on a couple of my videos, I've turned around and said, you know, get used to what you're living on and be happy with what you have and where you are. And I live here in Thailand on half the amount of money that I used to earn in England. And in my mind, I live a far better life. Because at the end of the day, <coughs> everything is much cheaper here in Thailand. The cost of living is far, far cheaper. This house that I'm, I'm living in now, and I'm actually buying it now, um, when we rented it, it used to be 12,000 baht a month. So I'll put the figures up there in dollars and, and uh, your type of currency, the Australian dollars and stuff like that. And as you can see, where could you live in the Western world on that amount of money to rent a property? Especially a property like this. Look at it. It's beautiful. It's a nice sunny day today. Here we are in, in October. And I'm sat here with a t-shirt on. It's beautiful. But anyway, going back to the... <laughs> I'm just rubbing it on. Either. Going back to the motorbike and sidecar. Um, and her business that she's started. Now, all she needed to do this business is, is a couple of boxes, a gas canister, 
and things like that. Now she bought she bought all of that herself, and um, the total cost to set her business up was five thousand baht for everything, for the gas, for the for the bottle, and um, for the license to be able to go and do that, to be able to sell. Now she sells the the snacks, the sausages, the pork balls, the fish balls, um, the savoury snacks. She sells all of them on the seafront. So she just does it on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. But this weekend, it's a, it's like a holiday weekend. So there's plenty of people down the beach. So she's away this morning at okay, half past nine. And she'll be back home tonight about four or five o'clock. Unless she sells everything that she's got, and then she'll be back on a bit earlier. And um, so the, the license to be able to do that, it was a hundred baht. A hundred baht for the year is like a hawker's license, so she could go and sell the food on the seafront with like all the other food vendors. And a um, hundred baht. But if you're cheeky and you think, okay, I'm going to sell some food on there without a license, because the police stopped her because she's a new person there and the police haven't seen her before, they actually challenged her and, and they asked to see a license and everything. And if she didn't have a license, it's a 2,000 baht fine for actually trying to sell food on, on the seafront without a license. 2,000 baht, but it's 100 baht to go and get the license. So you'd be silly not to go and get the license. <laughs> you know? But there are some people who, who chance it. But of course this weekend has been an exceptionally busy weekend. So she's done okay. She's happy because she's met other people. She um, gives her that chance to be able to sit and talk to tourists who come down to the beach. Thai tourists, obviously, not phalangs. And um, she's enjoyed, she's enjoyed it, and it's given her some self-worth to think, oh, you know, yeah, I've, I've made this money, I've, I've done this. And um, like I say, it's not because she needs the money, because, you know, I give her a salary and she, she has enough money to live on. <clears throat> and I'm proud of her because she's, she's done that. And um, we still live the lifestyle that if we want to go on holiday some, sometime, then she doesn't have to, because she's not committed to anything. Now, I used to run a coffee shop, and it, that was the same thing. Um, you know, if we wanted to go on holiday, we'd just shut the shop up, and we went, went away on holiday. Um, but as far as in, in, income's concerned, just look at it just this weekend. I mean, one weekend, you can't probably base the figures on, on one weekend's worth of sales. Compared to the expense and expenditure of actually opening the shop up and, and then uh, running the shop with electricity and things like that, a motorbike and sidecar knocks the spots off it. It absolutely knocks the spots off it. Because it's so cheap to set everything up. As I say, 5,000 baht to, to, to run the business. Okay, there's, you know, the, the motorbike and law, we bought this second hand. And um, so yeah, that is another expenditure. But that costs us 30,000 baht to, for the motorbike and sidecar. Um, which, in my mind, is is very thirty thousand baht, like seven hundred pounds, and you can do so many things with, with that. I love driving the Samlar. It's a it's a good little machine. As I said, there's many things you can fit in there. You can four people there. You can carry around and to insure it for a year. Insurance and tax for a year is seven hundred baht. Fifteen pound a year. Okay, that's only third party insurance, and um, but seven hundred pound, seven hundred baht a year. <laughs> crazy, isn't it? It really is crazy. 
So for those people who are, are married and their wives are feeling a little bit bored and want to do something, let them go and do it. Let them go and start the business up. Because then they'll feel better in themselves. And it gives you a little bit of a, a break as well, because then, you know, you can do some of the things that you want to go and do. You know, sometimes it's, it's worth, oh, what can I say, it's immeasurable the feeling of happiness she had because she could go out and do a little job and uh, you know she might make uh, five or six hundred baht a day now if she makes five or six hundred baht a day that's that's about what the Thai salary is but the fact that she's her own little business she makes the money, she makes the decisions, and she's not working for anybody else. And it's extra pocket money for them. You know, if you're prepared to do it, and you, you can do it. And she's, she enjoyed the market with the clothes, and uh, she's actually still got the clothes business, and she's keeping that just in case she doesn't like the selling of the, the food on the, you know, on the seafront and things like that. So she sort of got both options, but then if she wants to sell the clothes business, she can sell the clothes business because it's, you know, she's got all the stall, the clothes, everything. So, and um, no, I didn't pay for anything like that. I didn't buy uh, the, the clothes. The only thing I bought was the Samla for 30,000 baht. And everything else, she's paid for it herself out with a salary that I give her every month. So, but that was the understanding that if she wanted to do it, she did it at her own cost and she paid for everything. So I didn't have to fund anything from it. And again, I'm sure there's lots of people who will say that I have funded it, you know, in one way or another, because I give her a salary and Okay, if that's what you want to think, that's how you want to think about it, no problem. But I'm happy with, with what's going on. As I say, it's all about balance here, yin and yin yang. I've said that a couple of times on one of the videos. You sort things out yourself. She's got to have her own space as well. You're living in a different country and it's nice to have your own space. I go out for a meal with the breakfast club once a week. So if I do that, why why should I stop my wife from doing what she wants to do for a, a day or so? Um, it's give and take over here, absolutely give and take. Now we used to go out with a girl that worked six days a week. And at first I didn't mind it, and, but then it's just like, uh, uh, all I did was take her to work and pick her up and uh, for me that wasn't the life that I wanted that's why I didn't retire to Thailand for and at the minute as I say if she works every weekend I've got no problems with that because we don't go anywhere on the weekend because it's too busy and it's you know when you, when you stop somewhere at a hotel it's more expensive on the weekend than it is during the week so if we go anywhere anyway we go during the week so if she wants to work weekends, I've got no problem with that at all. You know, it's give and take. Give and take, that's what the best thing is, living in Thailand, give and take. Right, so I've blackened all of this side off now. I'm gonna come round that side now. So I'm gonna alter the camera and you'll get a different view. And just like that, I'm at the other side of the motorbike going to clean this side. So I know to ramble on this, this video, um, but I think it's imp important to give people their own space over here, living here in Thailand. You can live a, a complicated life if you want, or you can live an uncomplicated life. You've got to adapt to the Thai ways 
it's not England and it's not America and it's not Australia. It is what it is, Thailand. And you either like it or lump it or move and go somewhere else because you will never ever change the people of Thailand. You might change the person that you're with, <coughs> but you'll never change everything else in Thailand. It is what it is. The paperwork, yeah, every country that you're going to live in has got paperwork. Nobody likes paperwork. I don't particularly like the immigration department because they always ask for extras, but it's never too much. It's never like, oh, and we're going to get that. You can get everything that they ask for. Sometimes, you know, it might take a little bit longer, but it's possible. You can do it. So I'm going to do videos on all sorts of things about living here in Thailand. I enjoy doing the videos. I, I think I've got a lot of information that I can give to people. And I've helped hundreds of people living here in Thailand. Because it's a wonderful country, especially with what's going on around the world now. When you get to your older age, you don't want all the, the crap that's going on. You know, you want a simple life and I can show people how you can live a simple life. And it's not difficult over here. Then I'm happy because I've, I've done my little bit and I've helped somebody along the way. And that's my old theory of life. And I've done it 30 years in the fire brigade and helped other people. And I still do it now when I'm living in Thailand. I'm a mind of information. I've got lots of information that I can share and pass on to others. And if it helps somebody along the way, then I'm over the moon. And that's how everybody should be, you know. But there are some people who take advantage of people and rip people off. Never been like that. I couldn't live with myself if I if I cheated anybody or robbed anybody. But within Thailand, beware, because there are plenty of people who will try to con you out of money and cheat you. And not just the Thai girls. <laughs> There's plenty of foreigners who'll do that as well. Try to cheat you out with some money. Again, my friend has, has lost nine million baht on a dodgy property deal that he didn't think was dodgy at first, but it is. Nine million baht. His life savings has gone. And uh, does this person feel guilty about it? Not at all. Not at all. And uh, so it's all the heartache and the stress and the, his comfortable life here in Thailand has been destroyed now. He's, he's living a miserable life because he's struggling for money every month. He made the wrong decision, he trusted the wrong person and boy, is he paying the, the cost for that now. Unbelievable. But I'm a trusting, well, I am a trusting person when, when I, I get to know somebody. But up until then, I'm a not a trusting person. You know, I don't believe everybody, what everybody says. Because in the past, I've been let down by other people and that as well. And um, so it takes a lot, a lot for me to trust somebody. But I'd sooner be like that than, uh, than not. Because at the end of the day, you know, you start to get a gut feeling as to, is it BS that these people are trying to tell you or sell you things? And invariably, yes, it is. But it's like me, I don't sell anything, so it's not BS. It is what it is. You know, I tell people how they can save money. I get nothing from it. I get no commission off anybody for sending people to them. Because my theory, if I can help somebody along, then I can help somebody along. And I'm, if I help an agent by giving him some, some references, that's my happiness that I can use his services to send people to, to get a better life or, you know, a better way of, of living here.
am I daft? Probably am, yeah, you know, but maybe it's in time, things will, will change, uh, things will happen. But until that point, I might be just being able to pass information and details on to everybody else. And if they can benefit from it, then I'm happy also. Because when I came, I had a, <coughs> a friend who's lived, well, doesn't live here, he's been coming here for years. So he sort of knew the score, so he helped me out. And one way or another, he saved me thousands and thousands of baht because you don't make a mistake. If somebody can put you in the right direction and tell you the, the things to do and say and what to look out for, well, then you're going to benefit from that. And uh, that's what I do now with everything. If I can pass on the information to other people, then great. But uh, I'll give you one, <laughs> one scenario. This, I, I have a workaround for like the elite visa. So it's not the elite visa, but it, it's something similar that you can have a workaround and uh, you can save yourself with the elite visa. You get a five-year visa for six hundred thousand baht, and I sort of have a bit of a workaround where you can get a, a similar, similar type of thing from that, from the elite visa, and you're going to save yourself. 480,000 baht, at the time it was 480,000 baht saving. Now this guy was so interested in, in my work around for it and I, I ended up sending him three or four emails. Oops. Sent him three or four emails. And so I told him how he could save all of this money. And I spent a long, a long time, you know, s setting out exactly what he needed to do, who he needed to contact, how much it was going to cost, and the process of doing it. And I just said, if you found any value of this, and I send this to other people as well, you know, if you find value of it, buy me a cup of coffee, three dollars for a cup of coffee. And his next email back to me was, oh, so you're turning into be an e-beggar now, asking for money. I've just saved him 480,000 baht and uh, I'm an e-beggar. How long it took me to write them three emails, to read his messages, let's say a couple of hours. So who worked for $1.50 for three hours? At $1.50 per hour. <laughs> And I said to him, I said, well, okay, I said, you don't have to buy me a cup, a cup of coffee. I don't force anybody to buy me a cup of coffee for us. If you didn't find, if you didn't find value in this, in this method, then I'm sorry. I said, you know, I said, anyway, anyway long story short, he used the method. He got his visa because I rang up the person involved and I said, has this person been in contact with you? And he said, yes, he did. He said he used my services, but he said he wanted what you, your suggestion. So I hope he lives a happy life. I really do. <laughs> okay, what? Ah, so what? Am I bothered? Nah, not really. As I say, with, with doing YouTube, and I'm not the only... YouTube who says this, that you take the good and the bad. There are more good people out there than there are bad people out there. And uh, I tend to deal with the nice people. And the bad people out there, I just block them or delete them from my channel. No need to deal with negative people at all. You know, I live in a, I'm a nice guy helping people no matter where you're from, or your social background or wherever, I'm a nice guy and I always will be a nice guy. And I always will be helping people. You can hear the plane in the background. 
We have a flying school close to us. So he flies over every day. So anyway. So that's it, that's the bike cleaned. All the back to black. And I'll do a little video and I'll show you the how black it is and how nice and clean it is.